afternoon, self-storage industry. Happy Thursday to everyone, and thank you for joining us for another virtual SPOA live webinar. Today is Overcome Your Pricing Challenges to Boost Your Bottom Line. My guests today are Jody Burks, Director of Business Development from StoreTrack, and Allison DeJager, President of List Self Storage. StoreTrack has been a partner of the SBAA for the last seven years. Welcome, ladies. Jody and Allison, if you don't mind, I'm going to turn it over to you so you can give us a little bit of background about your experience in the self-storage industry and your experience with your respective companies. Jody, I'll start with you. Thanks, Jessica. Hi, everyone. I'm Jody Burks. Um, I have been in self-storage for about 20 years. Um, I started uh, managing a self-storage facility myself and uh, worked uh, up the ranks uh, into a district manager and then uh, an operations manager for a portfolio in Florida and managed and operated several facilities there. Um, I joined StoreTrack about a year and a half ago um, when uh, our management company sold off the portfolio. So uh, I landed with StoreTrack and I'm happy to be here. Uh, StoreTrack is um, launched in 2014. Um, it is uh, the market leading business intelligence solution um, used by self storage operators across the world. Um, StoreTrack integrates um, and enhances data, um, including market rates, market activity, demographics, and, and other market data to provide uh, tools and services to um, operators, owners, investors to make better decisions in your price management, management, marketing, and investment and development decisions. Awesome. Thanks, Jody, so much for sharing that. Allison, I'm going to move over to you. Cool. Hi, everyone. I'm Allison. Um, I've worked for Lissell Storage since 2015, and back then it was actually a sister company to SBOA. Um, and then August of this past year, um, List was bought by Aggregate Intelligence, which is the parent company to StoreTrack. Um, so I've had a really um, cool education from owners and operators, but also on the acquisition side and now the data side. Um, and it's just all together been very cool. Um, and, and this little background about List, um, we're a platform for buying and selling self storage facilities. We've grown so quickly in the US that we're actually launching a UK site in the coming months. That's exciting. I didn't know that. I'm glad to hear that. Thanks for sharing, Allison. Um, before we get too far into the presentation, just want to go over a few housekeeping rules with everyone. This is a live presentation. All audience members and attendees are muted. However, that does not mean we don't want you to communicate with us. If you have questions, you may ask them in the questions pane. You can always throw a chat into the chat area to the entire attendee list or to someone specific on the attendee list. And at any point, if you're having any technical issues, there is a raise your hand option. I will do my my best on the back end to try to answer that technical question that you may have. So um, we're going to put a couple polls out here in the beginning. We have five quick polls that we would like for you all to answer. So I'm going to start with our first poll. Okay, do you currently own a self-storage facility? Or are you looking to own a self-storage facility? If you can take a few moments and answer, we'd appreciate it. Looks like the majority of today's group currently owns, but there's still a really good group uh, that is looking to own. And then we always have our vendor partners that love to join us. So thank you all for attending and thank you for answering that one. Second one. How many facilities does your company currently own, operate, or manage? Less than 10, 11 to 50, 51 to 100 locations, or more than 100 locations. Awesome. Get those answers in there. Looks like today's group, the biggest majority, has less than 10 locations. Second largest, 11 to 50. Third largest, that 51 to 100. No one today over 100 but that's okay you'll get there one day <laughs> next poll how often do you change your rates daily weekly monthly quarterly or as needed okay. 
get those answers in there. Largest group today as needed. And then it looks like we're running a, a tie between uh, second largest group daily and weekly. Third largest group seems to bump over into the monthly or quarterly rate changes. Next one. How often do you put together competitor reports, shopping your competition daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, or you're currently not putting together competitor reports? Oh, Jody, you've got some work to do here with this group. They're currently not putting together their competitor reports. So I think they're gonna find today's session super advantageous from that uh, result that I'm seeing there. Yeah, we can, help. we can discuss that. <laughs> and last and final poll. If you are doing those competitor reports and this other uh, mechanisms for reporting, how much of all of this is manual research for you? Jody, again, got to help this group out. It looks like they are either not doing it or all of their research is manual. We have way too much technology at our hands to be doing manual reports at this point. You guys are going to love today's session. So I'm going to let Jody and Allison get started and jump into the meat and bones of today's presentation. Uh, ladies, take it away. Okay. Let's see. Are we able to, okay, we're able to see the screen. Okay, yeah. everybody, um, again, uh, thank you for joining us and thanks to the SBOA for inviting us uh, to uh, do a presentation. Um, as Jessica mentioned, I think this is something that um, is good uh, for the self-storage uh, owners, operators, um, particularly any size from small, medium to large. Um, you'll see uh, how uh, tracking the competition um, and overcoming help, we can show you uh, some of the ways to overcome those challenges uh, to boost your bottom line. Oops, whoa, I'm going too fast. <clears throat> Uh, you guys already, uh, here's my information. Uh, again, welcome. Um, I am the biz business development manager, so if you need my information here, I'm guessing um, several of the people that are joining are already um, SBOA and StoreTrack users, um, but we do have uh, the information here uh, going forward for you. Um, like I said, uh, one of the things that we found out, you know, is um, and being a former operator is hearing the challenges um, that you have um, in the market tracking your competition and how important it is uh, to track your competition. Um, we have a, a quote here um, from Mark Poole at uh, Liberty Investments. And Allison, I'm going to ask you to read it for me. If you wouldn't <laughs> mind. <laughs> no, sure. Um, so Mark actually just, just said, you know, Oops, sorry. <laughs> um, strategic pricing and rate analysis have become more important than ever. Today, the competitive landscape is very diverse and there is an abundant supply. Uh, storage facilities come in all shapes and sizes. And in order for us to price our stores effectively, we need to know who, who we really compete with in each market. Leveraging technology allows us to do that while also limiting delays or human error. So yeah, so like I said, what we're here to talk about is, um, you know, the challenges of, of keeping track of your competitive environment. And part of that um, is with competition reports or uh, data reports um, in, in your own format, whether you want to call them a competition report or not. And as you can see here, um, as Mark points out, how um, important it is to um, keep track, uh, knowing your competition, who really is your competition in the market, and um, leveraging technology uh, to help you do that. So uh, some of the common challenges in rate checking 
um, again, um, like we said, um, if you're doing them manual, um, one of the things is, is accuracy. So um, who's doing the competition report? You know, there's no way uh, to verify the competitor data unless you research it yourself. So if you're doing it yourself, um, and like we said, manually, um, unfortunately, some of the um, uh, challenges could be that the information is outdated, um, also human error. Um, when you're maybe looking at websites or uh, whether you're still making manual calls, um, sometimes you're not comparing apples to apples. Are you recording the web rate? Um, are you recording um, the uh, walk-in rate, uh, the promotion? So uh, unfortunately, human error is, um, is, is part of the challenge there. I also think, Jordi, I just wanted to chime in a little bit. I also think that like that the, the goal of the, the management and the facility is to really focus on sales. And if you can take something off their plate and automate it, they've got more time to follow up on leads. They've got more time to, you know, reach out to people who inquired. Um, you know, they have a pretty busy job. Absolutely. Good, good point. Um, so along with accuracy, I think we're going to jump ahead to timing, which um, I think uh, goes along with your point there, is that, you know, the timing that it takes you to put together these reports and to do it manually. And uh, like you said, taking away from the manager's time. Um, if, if it's a small operator, um, you know, and you're the one who's on the desk, um, or, you know, even a district manager might have to do it for several stores. And again, um, you know, when do you have the time to do it? And, um, you know, how often are you doing it? Are you doing it once a week, once a month? Um, and then if you don't have the time to do it, um, how are you going to be able to act fast enough to make those price changes? Um, again, making price changes, adjusting your rates uh, to help grow your revenues. I mean, that's that's the goal. Um, again, another challenge would be um, organization, and in organization that would be, you know, um, how the reports are put together. Again, is everybody putting them together the same way? Um, is one, you know, manager uh, maybe not as proficient as using Excel, another one provides uh, an email to a district manager um, about the rates, and so things are not organized. Uh, things are hard to follow in that format, um, and it can be hard to, you know, tell what rates you need to act on if you're just looking at a, um, you know, static page or a PDF or a Word document, um, you're not really tracking trends. You're not seeing what's going on um, in your market. So again, um, that being a challenge and, and how often we mentioned how often you need to do it um, would depend on, again, maybe the size of your market, the number of competitors in your markets, and those are, you know, really important things for you to track. So smarter and strategic tracking gets you ahead of the competition. And smarter and strategic tracking boosts your bottom line. So um, as Allison mentioned earlier, you know, uh, keeping track of all of this and, and having a way to see it, visualize it, and react to it quickly um, for the managers or for the district managers or above um, is, is where you're going to make your price changes, make your adjustments, um, sometimes up, sometimes down. Uh, but the goal is to rent more units here really to boost your bottom line. I think I love the point though about like smarter tracking too because it's like information is wonderful if it's relevant and if it's true to right now like we don't really care about rental rates two years ago we kind of want to know now but we also want to understand the trends and see you know seasonally yearly what happens um so yeah I think it's just a great idea to you know evaluate data in an intelligent way good point so what are some solutions uh, to help you overcome these pricing challenges? Um, like Jessica mentioned in, in the poll, uh, one of our focuses here is, is focusing on the competition and tracking the competition and how you're doing it. Um, so uh, 
StoreTrack uh, can offer some solutions. Uh, we'll go through uh, some of um, our solutions and it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to uh, use StoreTrack, but showing you uh, how the data is collected or what data points are collected so that you can um, also take advantage of, of you know, this knowledge and having it um, at your fingertips to, uh, to do a better job uh, in tracking the competition. So, you know, some of the points in the, in the data points, I think, um, you know, is in the competition is, is where, where they are and who they are and what size they are and how many units available. Um, and that's a lot of um, information for you to track and, and to keep, you know, and like I said, keep track of and have it in a format um, that's easy for you to use. And um, as Jessica mentioned also, you know, technology, um, let technology help you. Uh, gather that data and do it for you. So, um, so one of the th uh, things we 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 have is um, up here right now is the market analysis dashboard, and I'll get into one of the products that we have that um, gives you some information and insights into the market. Um, one of the solutions we have is is um, called Optimize, and um, Optimize offers um, owners and operators tools to monitor your local uh, market uh, competitive dynamics. Um, it includes rate analysis, activity, inventory changes, marketing inf information, and other sites. So um, within Optimize, it gives you consolidated um, competitor rate details, um, daily automated competitor rate tracking, um, detailed market inventory, movement, um, Inventory movement, meaning you know what's what's happening in the market, what's um, going online and offline, um, some marketing um, information and more, and then um, reporting tools. So here's one uh, when we talk about the competition, and like I said, here you can see several things looking at your competitor overview. Um, so we have the ability to. Um, let you uh, set a 10 mile radius and in that 10 mile radius um, you can um, look at like how big uh, the competitor is the size of the competitor we've got total square foot here um, we've got um, common most common unit types and what's available the number of competitors in your market um, so that you can track um, again all of this information um, by logging into this easy to use portal and um, having this data at your fingertips. I think it's also kind of important to note too that it's it's relative you know two competitor they're not the same um, class A facility class C facility or they're not you know it's not an apples to apples comparison so I love that this actually shows you the name of the facility the location you have a really good idea of you know who you're evaluating and should that be weighed against you and also i know this is um we're we're not in a live presentation um you know uh, or a demo account here but um if you look over to the right there are some links here um that are within the platform that allow you to um also uh like a google street view where you can look at the facility like you mentioned allison has not everybody has the opportunity to get up off the desk and go out and travel around and look at all their competitors so they could see if it's kind of that class A facility to class A or if maybe it's a B or C, um, you know, so that you know if it's really a true competitor. Um, just because we uh, identify 14 here within a certain mile radius, again, that's you know where the inf knowledge from you and your team come from to know if it's a you know you want to have it listed as a true competitor okay. all right along with knowing your competitors would be the the proximity or a map view of again what um, how far they are from your facility, um, you know, some uh, right on the same street with you, as you can see here. So um, you're able to, to know exactly where they are. Um, you also would want to know um, current rates in your market. Um, you would want to compare, you know, like for like against your top competitors. Um, and um, particularly you can look at this on a daily basis um, we find more and more operators are changing prices 
uh, on average more often, again, depending on your market dynamics, but um, you would be able to take a look at this daily uh, and have updated, accurate information at your fingertips. So one of my favorite things too about this is that the store track platform is actually built out for like the airline industry and the hotel industry, which as we know, they price like minute to minute. Um, so it's really sophisticated how frequently we're, we're extracting that data. Not to toot our own horn, but. <laughs> true, true. Uh, we also have the ability to track historical rates and trends. And as we mentioned earlier, um, just thinking of a, a typical comp report and um, when I was uh, in operations and had several managers, I required them to send me a competition report once a month. Um, again, this was uh, as far back as three years or long or more, um, but they would be, we would have an Excel spreadsheet and everybody was required to fill it in. Um, one of the things that I didn't know was, you know, what day of the month were they filling it out? Say it was due to me by the 15th, but they could have done it on the 1st and my second manager could have done it on the 12th and the third manager could have done three of the competitors on the 10th and the other two on the 14th. So um, that goes back to the accuracy. But the other thing that we didn't have were trends. You could go back and look at the Excel spreadsheet from the previous month and say, okay, what did March look like? What does April look like? But here um, with some, you know, this particular product, you're able to see a graph. You're able to see trends over the 12 months. Um, you can see market averages, um, rates by competitor. Um, in the interactive platform, as you hover over the graph, it will change and show you the rates of those competitors. Uh, so um, just a, a fabulous tool uh, to really help you make good decisions and, and to drive your revenues. I don't know why this isn't moving. There we go. Um, also, uh, with tracking the competition and, and staying ahead um, of the competition would be to track the supply, the supply in your market. So knowing how many stores in your market offer a particular unit types. Um, for this particular screen, um, we can track uh, from the websites when inventory goes on and offline, uh, meaning today, uh, yesterday you advertise a price for a 10 by 10, and then today I go to your website and it says call for availability or there's no price online. So you're able to see of your competitors in this market, the red shows you um, how many are off the market and how many are on the market, meaning who's got inventory available. And again, to help you with price uh, pricing decisions, to grow your revenues in your bottom line here, um, where there's more red, there's more opportunity for you to probably raise your rates. Um, where there's green, that means there's more inventory or supply on the market. And therefore, you know, maybe you need to adjust your rates. Um, you know your occupancy, so maybe you don't, but maybe you throw in a promotion and you make some adjustments there to, to get the unit rented. Um, know your markets across all stores. So again, uh, just comparing to and the use of technology and having these different uh, tools and different screens available to you instead of just a simple Excel report. Here you're able to see all the competitors on one page, all the unit sizes. Um, if there's a range, a price range for these stores, so for example here in this market, 5 by 10s are ranging from 58 to $98. Um, you can drill down to into uh, more particulars about that unit to find out if it's on the first floor or the second floor, if they had electric, some things. Um, but it really shows you how um, dynamic and diverse your markets are when you see, for example, such a spread or here on the t uh, 5 by 10 climate control, 69 to 131, uh, really can help you uh, determine how you want to uh, adjust your pricing strategy or, or stick with it if it's working. Um, there's also uh, the ability to download reports or export them throughout the platform. Um, we have different ones in PDF, Excel, um, graphs, charts, like we said, that we've shown along the way. So again, uh, 
taking away that manual process for you, uh, helping you overcome those challenges by having the data all in one place in an easy to use either online platform or um, accessible for you to download it so that you can look at it, study it, use it how you want. And just how your strategy varies from market to market and also from company to company. Everybody's doing something different. Um, it's one of the cooler things about the storage industry. True. Very competitive, like you said, as you can see. And um, uh, market to market is is definitely going to vary, uh, but you're still, still going to have competition. So um, this is just, again, uh, back to how you like to visualize the data. Um, there are Excel spreadsheets in here. Um, visualizing it in graphs and charts is fantastic, but if you also want to export it out so that you can kind of do your own modeling, whether it's, you know, insert a column here so you could say, hey, if I lowered my price by 10% or something, uh, it could still compare uh, to uh, your competition and look at and see how your rates uh, stack up. Uh, another thing that we track for you here is also when the last time a price was changed in your market. Uh, we re refer to that as volatility, is how volatile is your market? How often are prices changing? Uh, which is important for you to know um, to help you with those decisions also. Um, we also have um, a, a new feature uh, that lets you schedule reports. So uh, one complaint I would get from my managers was, I have to log into another portal, I have to have another login, I have to have another password. Um, here we have created the ability for you to schedule these reports to be automatically sent uh, to your inbox. You also can just download them on the dashboard if you feel like your email may be uh, overloaded and you don't want this. You also can choose whether you want it scheduled daily, weekly, monthly, um, and uh, in either one of these reports. You also can add additional emails if you want uh, the activity report to be sent to, say you have a district manager uh, and, and the district manager wants all four of his managers to get it or whatever, then that can be um, automated, automated also. Uh, here is uh, one of the reports that, that can be automated uh, or downloaded uh, as needed, and this is what the comp report, which we have been talking about a lot here um, and why it's so important. Um, and here is a view in Excel. And I would say that, like I said, as a, as a previous operations manager, this would be uh, somewhat similar to what we use where we used uh, an Excel format and then had the manager or the district manager or whoever type in um, all the prices. Um, from this comp report, though, you can see that we're going to have um, as many um, which you can set up on your dashboard, uh, the uh, competitors that you want to see. You're also seeing price. You're also seeing an average rate, um, market averages. You're seeing promotion. And you're also uh, able to see here this easy color code comparison, which I think is fantastic, is just uh, simply, oh gosh, I keep bumping my button here. Uh, Going, uh, if it's red, that means that your, um, it will show the percent to uh, over or under for the market average. So if you have a lot of red, uh, that shows that you're higher priced in the market. And if you have green, uh, you would be lower priced. Now you can look at the uh, market averages. And then um, you also can look at it here um, on an individual competitor basis. If you see up uh, in the right-hand corner, you've got competitor one, competitor two, um, and the spreadsheet will go along as many competitors that you put on your report. Um, so you're not just looking at averages. Now you're jumping in and you're looking at a competitor by unit type, by size, um, and the variation to um, your pricing strategy is percentage of are you higher or lower than that particular competitor in that specific market. Uh, going on with reports, and uh, again, just overcoming those challenges, uh, the, the reason for having those reports at your fingertips is so that you can act faster, so that you can uh, make those changes in your market, you can see what's going on, um, and not wait till once a month. Um, this activity report here, again, gives you some great insights to showing you um, 
what's going on, um, view the changes um, in rate activity, uh, meaning has there been any prices price changes in your market. So it will show you uh, yesterday the price was uh, $52, today the price is $53, and we can actually show you what competitor has changed that price. Um, on the um, inventory activity, same thing. If, if uh, inventory had gone online or offline at, uh, say for example here, it says public storage, one was taken off yesterday, so you know inventory is moving in your market on those particular sizes. Again, opportunity to make some adjustments in your prices to, to grow those revenues. And then the trend analysis is really cool because it will give you um, uh, a trend over uh, anywhere from five days to 365 days. So some of these may be tough for you to see on the screen right now. I apologize for that, but we will be sharing um, the um, presentation. Uh, that way you can drill in and I would always be able to send you a sample report if there's something you'd like to see. Um, another uh, product or service that we offer if you are a SiteLink user, uh, we actually have an integration with SiteLink where we can um, push data directly into your SiteLink. Um, there is a competitor tracking page and um, there's reports in there that you can pull down where you can see uh, the competitor rate daily. It's uh, updated daily um, and it's completely automated and it's just an integration that we do uh, through the API with StoreTrack and SiteLink so that you can have that data again instantly. Um, not as quite as many insights that you would get with the optimized platform, but again, um, just having those competitor rates um, pushed automatically into SiteLink, you don't have to log into another platform. Um, you'll see when the changes in the market occur. Um, and again, for you to be able to react uh, quicker uh, to make those changes. Uh, we have another quote. I'm going to let Allison jump in again. <laughs> Thank you. This is from Clark Porter, um, Data Intelligence at William Warren Group of Storefront. That's his, um, their, their company name. Um, and he says, in an ever-evolving and volatile environment, the data services provided by StoreTrack allow us to keep our finger on the pulse of a wide variety of quickly changing macro and micro markets. Only through this type of data are we able to efficiently respond operationally on the portfolio level, the unit level, and anywhere in between. One of the things I love about this too is he points out the macro and micro market and the importance of evaluating both. We know that your competitors, like you know, traditionally are within a three, maybe five mile radius. So it's really nice to be able to drill down on what's happening right in that bubble. Exactly. I'm going to uh, jump in real quick. There's two questions from the audience. Just while we have a few remaining minutes, so I'm going to get these in there. Actually, there's a couple of them. You guys ready? <laughs> Here they come. Sure. Jody, is there a free trial offered with this software? Our locations are not in large metro areas, and I would be curious to see if how many mom and pop facilities would be in your database. That's Absolutely. a really good question. Do go for it, Jody. Yeah. Um, sure, we have demos, we have trials. I'd be happy to jump on a call. We can pull up your market. I can send you a report to show you how many are in there. Uh, one of the things we do is we we do track off of websites. So we 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 track the data daily and pull the competitor pricing there. So if if you're in a really rural market and nobody's putting prices online, um, we wouldn't be able to to have the prices. But we have a lot of data. We have a lot of information, and I think. Uh, everyone sees that websites are getting better, more people are improving their websites, putting their prices online, uh, putting the ability to rent units online. Um, so as those evolve, you're going to get even more data there. So yeah, email me or uh, have Jessica, I'll get your information and, and we'll be able to take a look at that. Also, yeah. give us feedback. So if we're missing something, let us know. We'll find it. <laughs> Thank you. you guys definitely will find it. They are data, get out there and it data gurus. That question was from uh, Joseph Verdi, and I'm going to ask, he has a second one here too. Are you limited to a 10 mile radius on these reports, Jody? You are in uh, this particular optimized platform, yes. So um, it would only go out 10 miles. And, and if you have multiple stores and we would set up an optimized account by 
each store so that they have their own 10 mile radius of each store. So your whole platform doesn't have to be on one account, one 10 mile account. Does that make sense? For sure. Yeah, it definitely does. And if, uh, if anyone out there feels that your questions aren't being answered, please put it in the chat or put it in the questions pane. Uh, the next one comes from Ryan Evans. Are there any plans to integrate with other softwares? We use storage. Um, so that's a great question, and um, we would uh, like to reach out to StoreEdge to see if that's a possibility. Um, I know that we do, like we said right now, integrate with SiteLink. Um, so um, we would love to look for more opportunities and see if we can make something work. Great. Then Glenn Greenberg is asking, how often is StoreTrack updating rates and trends in all markets? So for uh, most of the platforms, it's daily. Um, I believe the data team checks the data about 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so uh, that would be the only, occasionally I get a few calls and say, you know, you don't have the price of my 10 by 10, correct? Um, if we uploaded the data at 6 a.m. and then you check a price at noon, there's a possibility it could be slightly different. We also have the ability to track prices. Um, we have been uh, started doing it intraday, so twice a day. Um, we don't show that in the optimized platform or the site link platform, but we do have custom reports, which the page is on right now, uh, where we could supply that data or a feed if you uh, wanted to see if rates were changing more than once a day in your market. Great. And then the last question that we have, and then I'll let you jump back into the final parts of your presentation. This came from Chantal. She's asking, what's more effective in your opinion to help increase your success rates as a storage owner? Marketing versus competitors analysis with the pricing strategy, or what do you ladies recommend? I sorry, Jody, if you I think that boils down to where you're at in your economic and physical occupancy. Um, if you're in that sweet spot, 80 to 90% economically occupied, you may not really need to allocate as much to your marketing budget, especially if you're in an area that's um, really competitive with a lot of rates. But you know, if you're in like that lease up mode, um, yeah, that's that's not a bad way to put your funds. <laughs> Sorry, good, steamrolled you. Good points. I was going to answer both. Uh, I think it's hard to, to distinguish between the two. Uh, but again, to Allison's point, like I said, uh, certain markets need to put, you know, more eggs in this basket over that basket, uh, depending on the time and, and uh, where your uh, facility is. Like she said, lease up, new, old, highly occupied. Uh, so a lot of those factors would uh, need to be considered. Great. All right. If anyone has any questions, we'll save them to the end and we'll let Jody and Allison wrap up here within the next few minutes. Okay. I'll try to move just a little quicker. And like you said, we can go back to questions or answer, yeah. um, get them together time, after Jody. the presentation. So um, this is another solution here. And like I said, just custom reports. You don't have to use the online platforms. You don't have to have site length to, to do this. Um, we can also customize um, reports for you. Uh, we do have many clients. We have small, medium, large. Um, we have uh, people that are, are, you know, not necessarily owning a self-storage facility and needing rates maybe on the investment or the acquisition side. Um, so here is just a couple samples. Uh, we look at maybe historical uh, rates also for you if you need to. And here is one report here in Excel. And then the other one was customized actually for a, a self-storage operator who wants this same report to go out to um, his managers in this specific form. Uh, I forget if it's daily or weekly. And it's also color-coded, as you can see here. So, um, you know, they gave us the feedback. We incorporated it into a report that they already used. And they're familiar with this. But we're populating the data so that they don't have to do it manually. Um, we have another quote, and I did want to thank all of um, uh, our quotes here that they're um, all, I think, SBOA members, and um, a lot of them are store track users. Um, we do have some medium and large operator quotes here. So, Allison, I'm going to let you go read the last quote here from Argus. Yeah, Jill Razzo from um, Argus. Um, he said, market rates vary by rural city to metroplex and also state to state. 
Competitor comparison time of year and occupancy drive our price points. The need for an on-demand option of consistency prompted us to use a data services company. Also time constraints of having managers and supervisors constantly creating spreadsheets. We like store tracking the idea of receiving updates daily and automatically. So again, I think we touched on this throughout the presentation, talking about the consistency, talking about the timing, taking away from uh, managers' times, uh, creating new spreadsheets. Um, so uh, this uh, really gave them uh, the tools to have the data at their fingertips without uh, having to have their team automate them or uh, spend their time going out and doing their own comp shops. So to wrap it up here, um, in, in summary, uh, we have small, medium, large operators. Like we said, uh, we have uh, all different size clients with us here at StoreTrack. Um, I think the important thing is to know that, you know, where this overlaps is that everybody needs competitor rates and competitor data and competitor information uh, to make good decisions, um, to, to drive your business, um, and all of these things. Um, uh, you know, rely on your your market competition and the data. And, you know, some of the small operators, like we said, if you're still using a manual process or when we say ad hoc, just meaning uh, sometimes you do it this month, sometimes you do it next month, um, you know, the need for uh, that data and competition information is uh, really important, and it overlaps into the large and the medium size operators too. Even uh, if they have their own revenue management system, like you said, just having a reliable, accurate um, daily information where you can get those rates and things and trends uh, put right into there is um, uh, really important, and again, in helping you drive uh, that bottom line. So better data reporting, smarter pricing strategy means bigger bottom line. It sure does. And Jody, let me wrap this up with a final question here. It looks like her name is Nadra. I apologize if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. Is there a cost associated with using StoreTrack? And if so, what is the cost? Yeah, um, there is. I would say it's a low cost solution. Uh, I can't quote you a price today here on the phone but uh i mean without talking to you understanding um your needs and and how many uh, facilities you have um if you are an sboa member there is a discount available for you uh, i believe it's 25 percent off of, of our optimized platform and um it starts at like 36 dollars a month and again that depends on how many facilities you have um so uh to me, I always say, if you get one more rental, it pays for itself. And I'm hoping you, hoping it's even half the price of one rental. You only get, have to get a half a rental. <laughs> <laughs> That's <Excuse> true. <laughs> so true. All right, so we're going to we wrap up. Options. Yeah, definitely. And if anyone wants to get in touch with StoreTrack, um, if you check the chat area and then after uh, today's webinar, we'll send these links out to you. I've put Dave Manning's information from the SBOA into the chat area. He would able, be able to connect you directly over to Jody and her team, or I can do it myself. My information's in the chat as well. Um, or after this video renders, once we're finished, you can go back in and watch it in Jody's opening presentation slide, had it in there, and we'll send that out as a follow-up to everyone that was able to attend live today or had pre-registered and couldn't attend. Um, also in the, the chat, there are links to all of our websites, sboa.com, listselfstorage.com, storetrack.com. You can go out directly to any of our sites, contact us from there if you have questions. Um, my LinkedIn's on there. I'm about to toss Jody and Allison's LinkedIn pages out there, as well as Dave Manning's. Connect with us through social channels. Uh, we're here to help people get connected and save time and money as business owners in the self-storage industry. Uh, ladies, thank you so much for being here today. I truly appreciate your time. And you. I do have one final SBOA plug because you know I have to do it. Uh, <laughs> there is a big announcement. If you haven't already seen, we are doing our annual virtual conference Tuesday, June 22nd from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern time. Registration and scheduled details will be forthcoming. 
What's really cool about this one is we are live streaming the entire event through YouTube, LinkedIn Live, and Facebook. We have never done this before. We have an amazing production team sitting behind us that's gonna help us ex execute this. So stay tuned. Please join us for uh, our conference on June 22nd. And again, if you ever need to get connected to any of our vendor partners that we have that sit in our savings program, please feel free to reach out to Dave or myself. Thank you so much for joining. Alice and Jody. can't wait to see both of you in a couple of weeks at Florida yeah. SFA. Yeah, um, we'll be at the Florida show. Awesome. I'm super excited. If anybody out there is going to Florida, you'll be able to see us there as well, probably at SSA and ISS in the next coming months. Have a great Thursday, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in, and thank you for your time. Take care. Thanks, thank everyone. you. Okay. Bye. Appreciate it, Jessica. No problem. Thanks, Jody. Thanks, Allison. Bye, guys. See ya. Bye-bye.